I have made a huge mess. It is insane. I cannot believe how many books I have. So I started organizing my math books this afternoon because it's raining outside and it's been raining all day. And I thought, okay, this shouldn't take long. I should be able to do it all in one day. No way, not possible, not going to happen. I have so many books. It's going to take me several days to organize everything. So in this video, I thought I would just show you what I've done so far. Let's start by looking at the books we have here on the shelf. These are some of the books that I've already organized. This top shelf is really important for me right now because I've been looking at these books. These are books that are written in Spanish and I thought I'm putting these in the top shelf because I've been looking at these quite a bit and it's just nice to have access to them and to know where they are. So a lot of these books were originally written in English and then some were written only in Spanish. For example, this book here, has been written by the famous late Serge Lang. This is basically Serge Lang's linear algebra, but in Spanish. This second row of books is really special because these books are really rare. These are books that have been published by Mir Publishers. So Mir was a publishing company that would translate books from Russian to other languages. And here's an example of one such book. I don't know if they still publish books, by the way. General Methods for Solving Physics Problems. This is Mir Publishers Moscow. So these books are pretty rare, they're pretty expensive. Here's a chemistry one, and then most of them are, are math books. So yeah, pretty cool. As a collector, this is kind of a big deal. They're very, very hard to get. On the bottom shelf, we have some books for physics. And most of these are general physics books. Some of them are a little bit more specialized. Let's take a look at one of them, maybe that one there on the end, it looks really, really old. Okay, let's take a look at this book. It's really thick and really, really old. A textbook of physics, Grimsel. Yeah, look at that, super old book. I'm just gonna give it a whiff. Ah, oh, it's nice. Here's a look at the inside of the book. Electrical structure of matter. Determination of the age of the earth. The theory of radioactivity is important in geology because it provides methods for calculating the age of minerals and rocks belonging to different geological periods. Cool. Let's turn the page, see what we have over here. Yeah, more images. I mean, really good quality for being such an old book. Now that I've shown you all the books on the shelf, let's just wander around and look at all of the books that we have and just see what we find. This big stack of books belongs to the Shams Outline series. So basically, Shams writes books for almost any subject, I think, and they have definitions and examples and exercises with answers. They're great for any class that you're taking. So this is the one on analytical chemistry. They're also really inexpensive. Here's an older edition of the one on just basic calculus. Yeah, pretty cool. Fluid pressure. Yeah, you study that in physics as well. Here's some of my computer books. These are gonna go also in their own row. We have the C++ programming language. This is an absolute classic by the creator of C++. An SQL book. Code for Teens. Fortran. Just all kinds of random books. Python. Essential Computer Mathematics. Now this is a math book, so, and it's also a Shams. So does it go with the computer science books or does it go with the Shams books? and I'm really torn about what to do with this one. I think I'm gonna put this one with the Shams books, because it's the Shams. Here's a really cool book that I actually use for a course, and someday I'll make a video about this book because it's awesome. It's called Introduction to Cryptography with Coding Theory, and I read pretty much the whole book. Our teacher was really, really good, and he covered the whole book, which was awesome. Here are some books on finance. This is Security Analysis, really thick book, it's a classic. This book is really good, I like it a lot, and I've read almost this entire book. It's called Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets. This is for people who want to learn to trade. And there's a lot of criticism about TA. There's a lot of people that don't believe that technical analysis works when you're trading stocks, futures, or other instruments. But, I don't know, I think it's better to have it than not have it. So, yeah, great book if you're into trading. I definitely recommend this one. Here we have some other computer science books. Introduction to Programming Languages. The C programming language. Yeah, this is a classic. The Art of R Programming. Encyclopedia of Computer Science. This book is ridiculously awesome. 
And I want to show you this book, and I will make a separate video for this book because look how thick that is. Just ridiculous. Let's just open it up. This is one of those books that's just like fun to sit down and read and have a nice cup of tea on a rainy day. I mean, I love this book. Look at the pictures. I love that it has these pictures. And they're old pictures. These are pictures from the past, from a different time. It's just really cool. These old computer books, just, <laughs> just awesome. Oh, I love this. What a great book. Okay, let's keep going. We'll come back to this another day. I've got a chemistry book here. These are also books that are considered finance books, Practical Speculation. And this one is often applied to financial situations, Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. This is another classic book. These are books published by Dover and Dover is going to get its own shelf in my organizational structure because Dover is special. Dover books are well-made, they are super affordable, and they are reprints of classic books that are very hard to find. And I think that makes it awesome. It's an awesome publishing company, and I think it deserves its own shelf. We have a great partial differential equations book, Applied Analysis by Cornelius Lankzos, The Theory of Spinners, Ellie Cartan. There's one in particular I want to show you. This one is About Vectors by Banesh Hoffman. This book is really weird. It's very, very different from other math books. It's also coincidentally very affordable, so it's not an expensive book, and there's plenty of copies around. And the entire book is on vectors. And if you're thinking, I already know what a vector is, I don't need an entire book on vectors, this is a book that is really not what you expect. Let me show you the contents of this book. This book really forces you to think about vectors. The author's purpose is to get you to think a little bit deeper. It talks about introduction to vectors, algebraic notation and basic ideas, vector algebra, scalar scalar products, vector products, quotients of vectors, and then it talks about tensors. But even from the very first section, the way it reads is very different. Chapter one is on introducing vectors and he spent some time defining a vector I feel like the author really wants you to think about vectors much more than you would if you were just taking a class like trig and you have some exercises where you do some problems. No, this book really tries to get you to think a little bit deeper. And it's a very unconventional book, which I think makes it cool. I feel like when he wrote this book, no other book out there was written like it. In fact, even today, I don't think I have a single book that's like this one. So definitely points for uniqueness. Here on the floor we have some other books. These books are really old. So I decided that because these books are so old, I'm going to put them on their own row on the bookshelf. And that's because they're so old that they start to fall apart, you see? So you have to be extra gentle when you're handling them. So if I take these books, let's say, Let's come over here to this bookshelf. You can see there's plenty of books here. These are all math books. And I were to put this old book, you know, between other books, I feel like I don't want to damage them because they're so old. Yeah, pretty cool. It's funny because I started with the intention of organizing all my math books, and then I ended up basically solving little sub-problems, organizing subsets of my math books. So the Shams, the Dover books, the Spanish books, the Mir books. The computer science books, the physics books, the finance books, etc. Yeah, just thought I would make a video. Until next time, good luck and take care.